Can you talk a little bit about some of the things you cover, like bowing and finger pressure? Yeah, I think that uh, playing in a jazz style, is particularly in this you know hot club rhythm kind of style, uh, what we want to do as a violin player is develop a certain kind of ease and rhythmic quality in the playing. And I find that um, many violin players that I encounter press quite hard with the fingers of their left hand. And I think it slows them down. So there's a, a number of spots in the book where I really talk about learning about uh, the pressure used in your left hand to minimize the amount of pressing you do. And I think that this will really help people increase their speed and their agility and their ability to move around the instrument and be actually more rhythmic. I think heavy and weighted fingers cause things to not swing as much as they could. So the idea here is to lighten up and get swinging. Let's talk about the music in your book. Each of the songs has two staffs. The top line being the melody, and that is the melody without any embellishment, just the pure melody of the song. The second line is an improvisation based on the melody. So it may have elements of the melody in it, but it's really a line that one would use as a solo instead of playing the melody. In other words, if you're sitting in with a band, the melody is going to be played at the beginning of the tune and maybe again at the end of the tune. But everything in between it in between those two playings of the melody are gonna be people's improvisations on the song. And this second line is a line perhaps you could use for an improvisation or as a basis for your improvisation that you could even embellish it further or play something similar or use information from it to craft your own improvisations. The book has 16 jazz standards like After You've Gone, Avalon, Chicago, dark eyes and a bunch more but it also includes two string quartets that you arranged yeah there's a couple of bonus arrangements in the book of some of these days and saint louis blues and uh, that was just in case there were string groups out there that decided they wanted to do versions of jazz tunes of these jazz tunes in, in their ensembles a lot of fun can you demonstrate the format of the book and cd the format goes like this first thing we're going to do is work on the melody line. So we're going to listen to the slow track. We're going to play the melody at a slow speed. And then we're going to move on to the quicker track. Once we've got the melody up to speed, we're going to play the, uh, the uh, up to tempo track. And what I'm going to do is play the melody and then play the written improvisation. And then for fun, I'm going to make up my own improvisation. And this is what we're all going to want to do at the end of the day. In the book, you talk a lot about rhythmization as a way of taking a basic melody and turning it into a solo. Will you talk a little bit about rhythmization? Sure. Um, in Avalon, I'm going to take the melody, and it's, the melody is actually quite simple. The notes are half notes and whole notes. But I'm going to use my right arm, my bow, to create rhythmic interest in the melody without actually changing the melody notes. And, for example, if we were going to take the first few bars of Avalon... <laughs> One way that I might want to rhythmize that in order to keep the melody of Avalon but add some other interest to it, I could, for example, go. And that's a rather simple way of taking a stated melody and adding rhythmic interest to it, which is really useful for a swing jazz style. well-known songs are these songs that that for example you use on gigs and maybe recording sessions oh absolutely these are songs that come up frequently in uh, casual playing situations 
and even sometimes in f more formal ones. These are real standard songs. They're very useful to know for, uh, for every player. One of the songs from the book, Rose Room, is on your latest CD, which has just been released as we're doing this in June of 2010. It's on your new CD called The Music of Eddie South by your band Violin Jazz, right? Absolutely. Uh, Rose Room is one that I've recorded a number of times. Uh, it's a jazz standard, and um, it's one of those tunes that's very, very useful to know. I have it on my uh, Eddie South Music of Eddie South Violin Jazz CD, and uh, also on I recorded it on, even on an earlier Violin Jazz CD. I've known you for a long time. We've played together for like 25 years, and I know that you've been influenced a lot by the jazz violin greats like uh, Stefan Grappelli, Joe Venuti, and Eddie South. And you talk a little bit about them in the book. Did you use any of their styles in the solos that you put in the book? Oh, I am. I definitely reference the great jazz violin players because they're influential in all of this material. They're the violinists that have come before me, and they're we draw on on their style, and we learn from their playing. And I think it's uh, I think it's really an important part of the book that we that we carry the tradition of swing and jazz and gypsy style violin playing forward and make it more contemporary while also showing respect to the the fiddle players that brought this style before us. We're drawing on the kind of playing that they did and actually I do reference it in a number of places in the book. I really wanted to maintain the, as much of the character of the, the original melody of Chicago, even in the improvisation. So on this particular tune, I think I really stick with the spirit of the melody. You'll find a lot of the, uh, places where I'm actually, in fact, quoting the melody in the improvisation. And I think that that's an important part of improvisation to identify your improvising with the actual song that you're playing. So in the case of Chicago, you'll hear little remnants of the melody line, even though I'm improvising, and especially on the improv line in the book, I'm hitting the same high points as the, as the original melody line on the, on the Chicago melody. But originally, uh, Chicago starts out like this. That's the opening statement. And in the improvisation, I'm rhythmizing it and I'm adding notes to it. And so you see, it still speaks the melody of Chicago while being rhythmized and I'm adding improv to it. I'm at actually putting more notes in there than the original melody. Chicago, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. <laughs> 